All right, then uh, welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question or queries. Now, this is a very simple question uh, based on prefix sum. So, let's uh, quickly wrap it up. The main takeaway from this uh, video should be that uh, prefer using one based indexing whenever a question is given on range queries. That is, when you want to perform some operation in some range L2R. Okay, so I hope you read the question once. The question is simply asking uh, for, for each query, uh, for each query, if I change the elements from AL, AL plus 1 since a, AR to K to some value K, will the sum of entire array be odd? That's what uh, this is asking. Okay, so Give a given query simply contains three parts L, R, and K. So if I change all the elements from let's say L was 2 and R was 5, so if I change all the elements that is A2, A3, A4, A5 to K, will the end sum of entire array be odd or not? Okay, note that the queries are independent so that they do not affect the future queries. Fine, no issues with that. So this is fine, fine input and uh, you have to print yes uh, basically for each query we have to answer, right? So for each query you have to print yes if the sum of entire array becomes odd and no otherwise. Okay, so if you are a beginner, uh, what like the simplest, what is the dumbest solution? For each query, uh, you first change the array elements. Basically, of course, you cannot uh, modify the original array, right? So what you can do is for each query, uh, create a new array in which the elements in this range L to R are changed to K and then you find out the sum. So that's the most dumb way. So basically for each query, the time consumed will be what? Uh, whatever number of elements you have between L to R. In the worst case, this can be array itself, right? L can be 1 and R can be N. So in the worst case, for each query, you will uh, run a loop uh, N times, basically, N iteration. Basically, uh, N steps will be there, right? For each query. So the worst time complexity can be N into Q, but uh, you know that uh, uh, since uh, depending on the constraints here t is uh, 4 right so in the end total time complexity will be what t into n into q and since t is 10 power 4 and uh, q is 10 power 5 and n is also 2 power 10 power 5 so all in all like 10 power 4 into 10 power 5 into 10 power 5 now this is not acceptable you cannot uh, go like 10 5 plus 5 10 plus 4 14 so 10 power 14 uh, loop is not going to work okay 10 power 14 iterations is not going to work you know you have to keep your iteration near to 10 power 7 right uh, that's otherwise there's a otherwise there will be a tle now what is all this question then Whenever a question is given on range query, you should always uh, like think about can I do some sort of pre-computation, right? So this question is a classical example of pre-computation. Does pre-computing uh, help? Now since uh, I'm a, I have to change all the elements uh, to k and then uh, sum, right? So maybe prefix sum can be used. That's the simplest uh, idea, right? Can I can I use prefix sum? It turns out uh, you can use prefix sum. So <laughs> let's just uh, quickly go through sublime and understand it. So it will be very quick. So let's say uh, this is your array, okay? I have just taken array 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And uh, you know that uh, given a query, let's say I'll just have a query here, uh, maybe uh, L equals to 3 and uh, R equals to, let's say 30, 40, 50, 30, 4, 5. So let's say uh, the query is uh, change all of these guys to some K, maybe K is, let's say 20, fine, doesn't matter. The idea is you want to change these guys from third to fifth index to 20. And then you want to know whether some of entire array, some of entire array has become odd or not. Okay. And since you know you're dealing with some, uh, looking uh, in terms of prefix sum might help. So here I've just created a prefix sum. So what is the prefix sum guys? So prefix sum, I hope you know this. <laughs> so prefix sum of uh, i is simply array of i plus prefix sum of uh, i minus 1. So basically sum of all the elements. So basically prefix sum of 3 is sum of all the elements till third guy. So basically this prefix sum of 3, right? So sum of all the elements from 1 to 3. So 100 means, so 100 is, this is basically prefix sum of 4. So it is sum of first 4 elements. This is sum of first 5 elements, sum of first 6 elements, sum of la first 7 elements. I guess we have only 7 elements here. Yeah, first 7 elements So basically uh, prefix sum of n would be basically the sum of entire array, right? And uh, in this questions, the prefix sum based questions, it always pays well. So a good idea is uh, basically uh, what is helpful here is uh, keep your arrays uh, one based index, okay? Keep your array as one indexed. So it will uh, create a lot of like, it will uh, relieve a lot of mental burden in your head. So when you're just starting out, so keep this uh, tip in mind that uh, keep your array one based index. So life would be very easy, okay, fine. So how can we optimize that uh, basically? Now what we're after is basically uh, we want to optimize a uh, query. We don't want to run a loop from AL till AR, right? We want to optimize that. Because in the worst case, this, this can take n steps. I would I don't want to do that. So here's my area. Here's my prefix. Huh? So basically what I want to do is I want to remove these guys and replace them with 20. I want to replace them with 20 and see uh, whether the sum of entire array is odd or not. Sum of entire array uh, is odd or not. So how can you do it basically? Okay, uh, do you agree with me? What do you need? So if I want to remove these guys, what do you need? You need this part, right? You need uh, some of these elements and you, you need some of these elements, right? So if you want to remove this part from your array first, so I'm not talking about adding K first. Okay. If I want to remove, if I want to remove these two parts, basically, okay, I, will, I also have to remove 50, right? So, okay. So if I want to remove uh, from L equals to 3 to R equals to 5, of course, uh, of course, only this part remains from 1 to 2 and then 4 to 5, right? So I want uh, some of these guys and some of these guys, okay? Now, can you clearly observe if I want to get uh, some of these guys, what you can do is, what you can do is, you can simply, uh, you can simply write here. So maybe I'll write here only. You can simply write here, prefix sum of, prefix sum of L minus 1, right? 
So this was what? L equals to 2. So you want first of all sum of these elements. So what is this? This prefix sum of L minus 1. And then you want these guys. So what is this guys? What is this? See, this is L, this is L plus 1, and this is so on, this R, right? Basically AR. This is AL, this is AL plus 1, and this is simply AR. Now you want this sum. Is there a way to get this sum? If you uh, see it, it is basically what? Total minus till this, right? So it is basically what? Total minus. So this is total. That is 280. 280 minus this part. So can you write it like this? Total is what? Total is prefix sum of N minus prefix sum of what? R, right? So see, you want to remove this part, right? So basically you want this sum and this sum. So what is this sum? This is simply prefix sum of L minus 1. Okay, prefix sum of just uh, one element less. Uh, basically, yeah, this, this was a uh, 3. So prefix sum of 2 is my is this part. And I want this part. So what is this part? It is simply from the total, from the total, just uh, remove this. Sorry, you want this, right? So from the total, from the total, just remove till this part. So what is this? What is this? If you want to remove sum till this part, it is simply prefix sum of R. So prefix sum of N, this is total, minus prefix sum of R. So now you have removed these guys. Now I want to add K as many times, uh, as many elements we removed, right? So we removed three elements. We want to add K here. So this is basically after removing the K, okay? So this you will get after removing uh, the segment from L equals to 3 to R equals to 5. This is removed. Now just add K three times. So just uh, add K into uh, K into R minus L plus 1, right? So if you want to check how many elements are there in this range, you simply do R minus L plus 1. That is simple math, right? So basically, uh, in constant time here, in just constant time, you are able to find out what is the sum of the entire array when you execute this query, right? Simple. So this part is first remove this, this part is this part, and then you remove this guy, right? So now after performing this, you have removed the subsegment, and now just add k as many times as there was as the as the as the number of elements, right? So this will basically for each query the sum of the entire array. So this is my required sum, right? Simple. It's simple prefix sum based. Uh, I don't know how can I simplify this further. If you just by looking at it, you can see, right? So first uh, get the prefix sum of l minus one, then get prefix sum of n minus prefix sum of r. So basically now you remove the subsegment, and now just add k as many times as many elements there were, and now just check whether this sum is odd or not. If it is odd, then print yes, otherwise print no. Right? Fine. So I've just taken the input here n q, and I am creating an array of long here. VLL is vector of long long. You can see here. I'm just creating vector of long long because I have to sum all the elements. Right? So the range was one e nine. So I don't want. I didn't want to risk overflow. That's why I did it. So I just uh, quickly take the array input then. Uh, for n i equals to 0, i less than n, i plus plus, say in array of i. Okay, one mistake here I did. So array is one index. Right? I already told you if, there, if it is a range query based question, always uh, make your array is one based index. So it is very helpful, uh, uh, helpful metal, mental model. It will not break for cases uh, here. So if l and r were basically one, it will still work. Okay, that's fine. Okay, fine. So I've taken their input uh, and then what is next? The next is I guess you have, you will be given uh, l, r, and q if I'm not wrong. Then you'll basically the next q lines of each test case will have l r and q l r and k. So let's just uh, run a loop uh, q number of times. And here we have l r and q. So they will be of course I can take them into l r and k. Okay, and I will take l r k. Okay, so should I take uh, this as long long? Uh, maybe I can take k as long long. Fine, doesn't matter. Uh, I guess the range is n to nine, so it will fit here. No issues. Now first things first. Uh, we have to calculate the prefix sum here, right? So we have to calculate the prefix sum. So I'll just uh, write here prefix sum uh, n plus 1. Okay, prefix sum n plus 1. And then I'll go through all their elements. i equals to 1, i less than equals to n, i plus plus, plus plus. And then uh, prefix sum of i would be prefix sum of i minus 1 plus area of i. Notice that uh, this won't uh, be a problem here because prefix sum of 0 is anyway 0. Okay, so the prefix sum of 1 will be simply the first guy, right? The prefix sum of 1 will be simply 2 here. Okay, yeah, so this, uh, this won't be a problem. Because we have taken one base indexing, uh, you don't need to write for check whether uh, the, we have the first guy or not. Okay, so this is simply a prefix sum I'm calculating. And now that I have the prefix sum, for each query, I can easily get my sum, right? So I'll just calculate the sum. So what is sum? First things first, prefix sum of L minus 1. Okay, sum before. Then total, basically prefix sum of prefix sum of N minus prefix sum of what? R, right? This part. We want this part. And then uh, simply add K to it. So K into uh, L minus l minus r plus 1. Maybe I should take them long long because it might cause an overflow. So fine. This might cause an overflow, right? So let's not risk it. <laughs> okay, fine. So now what thing, what do you need to do? You just need to check whether this sum is odd or not. If it is odd, then yes. Yes. For the new line, else see out no. I guess the case, it is case insensitive, doesn't matter here. And so odd I have defined above, uh, the function I have defined above. So yeah, I guess, uh, now what is the time complexity here? If you see here, uh, first things first, there'll be t test cases. So t, t into uh, t into like uh, then there is n n loops here and then for every q uh, for 
so basically for each test case the time complexity is what n okay and then a loop of q runs everything inside is a constant so now the time complexity has boiled down to if i have to write here the time complexity so initially it was what t into n into q right so now the time complexity has become uh, now the time complexity is t into n plus q n plus q right because for every query you just need to perform a, a constant time operation this part right so yeah let's just uh, quickly run it and see if it works yeah so it seems uh, like it works so i'll just quickly submit it and uh, see it works um, thank you for watching i hope you got something out of the video i'll see you in the next one